Okay, so in a nutshell, uh, the designers are responsible for writing a game design document, which they then give to the rest of the team. And this contains everything there is to know about the game. Uh, the designers can include artists and programmers. They're not always executive. The artists themselves are then responsible for the look and the feel of the game, and they'll make an art production plan. The programmers will make a technical design document. Um, in module three, we had a wiki as our technical design document. So here we have, for example, class diagrams uh, to do with the component system we used. Programmers obviously code centric tasks. At this point, game milestones are also defined according to this reference here. In terms of documents, remember, you know, agile, just in time documentation, just good enough. So this documentation here will probably um, undergo many, many different revisions. So whilst the programmers write the code of the game, the artists develop the assets or the content that will make up a finished game. Both teams will start with a specification and a board brief, <coughs> and then they'll go into their research. The artists, this is often finding their art style they wish to pursue with things like mood boards. For the programmers, we try and identify what the game will be and identify problematic areas. We may also plan the code structure. When the code the design, uh, code team design the code, they can use UML diagrams. So this, for example, is a use case diagram I made for Connect4 project. This is then turned into a class diagram, which I used to write the code. The artists will define their style bible. So this is the style bible from Picasso. As you can see, it tells all the artists how to draw characters in the same way. After that, the programmers write the code, whereas the, the artists produce the assets. Uh, first, they will have the concept where they might go through different iterations until they find their finished piece of art that will enter the game. Programmers are expected to follow good practice to try and keep their code error-proof. For example, they're meant to use source control so that they can roll back broken code to stable versions, and they are responsible for the build. They should be able to make a build in one step without any errors creeping in, and daily builds are often recommended because their job, uh, the work they do is small and iterative. They should also keep on track of on top of bugs, because the longer that a bug is in the system, the more expensive it will be for the company. The two working processes can be quite different. Uh, early on in the process, uh, there's a lot of art that is often thrown in the bin until the chosen style is found and is kept. And this happened quite a lot this module with our drone game for the artists. However, after that, art becomes a much more of a linear series of tasks. For example, here, concepting, modeling, texturing, rigging, so on and so forth. Programmers tend to work more iteratively in, in, in small incremental steps. Um, and this can be more turbulent. They need a lot more management. And often, you know, as a result of problems with code, requirements will change, such as bugs. Programmers tend to work collaboratively with the other programmers because they're working on the same code base. And they often have to go back to previous code they have written and refactor it to improve it or to debug it. Artists tend to work by themselves on their own pieces of art, and they don't tend to have to go back to previous work to improve it. You know, once it's done, it's done. It's for this reason I've heard that Agile doesn't work well with art teams. Um, I haven't actually found a lot of evidence for this. Uh, this reference said that Scrum failed with the art team in a, in a games company. The art team was too large. Again, it was a linear, all their work were linear processes. And it wasn't sure, you know, there, there, there was discrepancies in terms of who actually owned the artwork. Ownership issues. 
But the art team used Kanban instead, and that is Agile. And many people suggest that programmers and artists should form cross-functional teams. Uh, what you should not do is have a separate team of artists and a separate team of programmers who have their daily stand-up separately. There can be overlap between programmers and artists as well. For example, UI programmers and graphics programmers will work quite closely with the artists and know what the artists are doing. Technical artists will work quite closely with the programmers. In terms of managing these data sets, there are actually three types of data that need managing. You have the source files, such as Maya project files. These are exported into game assets, such as Collada files, FBX, or Unreal Engine 4. And these are then turned into the engine into deployment assets, such as DA Fire and UAsset files. There's also levels, which are important. You know, the artists don't make these, the designers do. These are still important assets and we will need to take care of these. So they should all be placed in separate folder structures, but uh, one solution is to have the folder structures mirrored for different sources. And I'll give an example in a minute. Uh, artists and programmers and the designer should also use source control uh, to collate all of these. And for clarity, an assets naming convention should be employed. Uh, relative paths will here be useful if uh, things change. So, for example, here is the naming convention we came up with at GamerCamp based on the Unreal 4 naming convention. You know, we use this as a reference. So here's an example. Okay. All of these types have their own separate folders. And each file is named according to the level name, two characters name of the asset, the type here, matched material, and the name of the artist who worked on it, in case there's a problem. When we actually did this exercise, it was a meeting I called, I would have preferred the level designer to have been present, you know, because levels are also assets and they will have to go into a similar thing as, as this. In terms of folder structure, well, this is what we had in Picasso. The artwork in folder for source files, source assets for game files, and the game data for the deployment files. Um, the art team actually structured this folder how they wanted, and they found that that worked better for them. And then we had an automated script that converted the game files into the deployment files. The issue we had was that, um, you know, we're not so concerned about this folder being chaotic that the artists didn't really want to interact with this, perhaps because it was so different to their folder structure. So often the programmers would actually copy stuff on Perforce from here to here and do the building. And that was quite a lot of time spent for the programmers. So that might be something we have to work on next module.